I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my turn till I. Sing it out.
on, give the Lord a hand, God, for praise in this place. Hallelujah. Holy, thank you. You may be seated. Turn your attention to the screens for the announcements. Good morning, church family and guests, and welcome to Sneeze Assembly of God. Here are your video announcements for Sunday, September 22nd, 2024. Come join us for midweek services this coming Wednesday, September 25th. Family supper begins at 5.30 p.m. Prayer time will be in the sanctuary at 6 p.m. Bible study, one-way student ministries, and kids connections all begin at 6.30 p.m. The menu for the family supper this Wednesday will be chicken nuggets or pulled pork sandwiches with fries and coleslaw. So stop on by and grab a meal before the service. Attention Men's Ministries, we are looking for volunteers to help feed the Sneeds football team here at the church on Friday, September the 27th at 3 p.m. It's homecoming, so if you're available, swing on by and let's pour into these young men. Senior Adult Ministry is planning to travel to Tallahassee Lighthouse Children's Home on Friday, October 4th to hear the Mark Trammell and Tribute Quartet. The cost is $15 per person, and this includes the meal. Bus will leave the church at 4.15 p.m. Central Time. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Payment will be due to Peggy Cobb by September 29th. Young Adult Ministries is presenting Gang Night coming up September 26th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. They will have a hot wing bar with all the sauces. Bring your favorite tailgate, appetizer, or dessert. Wear your favorite team jersey. For more details, contact McKenna Johnson. Here at Sneeds Assembly, we love our volunteers to the moon and back. Coming up September 29th will be the Volunteer Appreciation Luncheon. We want all volunteers from every department to stay after service and have a meal to show our appreciation and to recognize your service to the kingdom. Thank you to our volunteers for being a blessing to not only your church and your community, but to the kingdom of God. Thank you. Coming up Sunday, October 6th is Pastor Appreciation. We would like everyone to stay after service that day and have a meal in the fellowship hall. The meat will be provided there's a sign-up sheet for sides and desserts in the foyer. There will be a table set up in the fellowship hall if you would like to leave Pastor and Miss Donna a card or a letter. Looking forward to a great time of fellowship and appreciation of our pastor. All right, everybody, it's about that time. Get out those coins and dollars. It's time for BGM. No, I'm just kidding. It's next week, so, but have those dollars and coins ready for BGMC next Sunday, the 27th. Coming up tonight at 6 p.m. is the College Age Small Group. This will be happening at Mitchell and Micah Fontenot's home. For more information, get with Mitchell and Micah. Coming up Friday, October the 11th at 6.30 p.m., Sneed's Assembly presents a gospel sing with Kevin Spencer. This is happening right here in the sanctuary, so if you're available, come be with us. This concludes the video announcements for today. Thank you for joining us at Sneeds Assembly of God. We're so glad you're here. Chris, that was a good one. We just had that discussion this morning. I said, it's not BGMC Sunday. <laughs> Got us. Hey, uh, young adults, the, uh, the uh, luncheon, uh, dinner, Saturday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Thursday. <laughs> Thursday. I just want to see if you remember. They got those shirts, buy one, get three free, uh, Florida State and the Gators. <laughs> you don't have a team shirt, they might even have some in the dumpster out back. Wow. Goodness gracious. Wow. Help us, Jesus. Amen. Good to see you in the house of God this morning. I, I challenge you to get here early. Get here early. You won't get your seat. I can assure you of that. <laughs> get here early. There's a lot of people on this side that I don't know, so I try to come out and see you. But uh, get here early and fellowship one with another. Also, Sunday school at 9 o'clock every Sunday morning. Uh, men are going through the book of Matthew. We're almost to the crucifixion. Uh, we've been in Jerusalem now for about three weeks. Um, but... Um, We'll be at the crucifixion of Jesus Christ here in a couple of weeks. Come out and be with us. I know the ladies have a wonderful message as well. 
So, so be with them. So, thank you for being here today. It's Amen. a beautiful day outside, beautiful day inside. Yes. Amen. 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 I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. Um, we had a testimony in Sunday school this morning. Prayer changes. Yes, prayer changes things. You, we, you need the prayer, and, we, and I need the practice. So uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Remember the families of Deidre McDaniel family, our sister Kathy Mavis. Sister-in-law passed away on Friday. Also, the Eddie Thames family, Mr. Eddie passed away on Friday. Brenda Thursby's family, uh, she was laid to rest on Friday. In the hospital, Betty Ann Thompson, she's in ICU in Thomasville. Also, Jennifer Etheridge is in Southeast Alabama Medical Center. Prayer, uh, these requesting prayer, Miss Vanessa Perkins is out sick today. Uh, Ms. D. Akers has suffered from a stroke. Emily Bamberg is recovering from surgery. Jeff Russell is recovering from knee surgery. Amber Prescott, I've seen Amber here today. Uh, thank God. Ms. Steve Hager, uh, Ms. Clarice Morris, Mr. Jimmy Devane. Uh, remember Mr. Jimmy, Ms. Gail Parsons, Hallie Prince, Ms. Fargie Dawson, Mr. Jerry Rabin. Also, uh, Mr. Raymond Holloway, uh, Ms. Patty Harris, and all those that are, uh, remember the, the uh, country of Israel and Jerusalem, peace of the Middle East. There's a lot going on over there. It's biblical. Also remember our country, uh, what's going on right here. There's a, there's a battle that wages every single day and uh, gets good and evil. We're standing in the gap. Stand with me, if you will. I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer. If you have a special need, just lift up your hand. God sees your need. God knows what you have need of before you even ask. But he likes to hear from you. Amen. Father God, we're so thankful for this day. We thank you for your abundance of mercy you give us every day. We thank you for your life that you gave us in that more abundantly, Lord God. Father, we... we we come before you today with humbleness, Lord God. We come before you today with praise and adoration. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we brought these needs before you today. These that are in the hospital, these that are sick, Lord God. These that are struggling with cancer, Lord God. I know you're able to do exceeding abundant above anything that we could ask or believe, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch our lives and heal their families, Lord God. Deliver them, Lord God, from this sickness. Bless those that raise their hand today, Lord God, that has a special unspoken request. Father, you know what they have need of before they even ask, and you're moving in their behalf. I pray that you would minister to them, Lord God. Give them peace in their heart. Give them peace in their mind, Lord God. Remove all worry. Remove all desperate, Lord God, desperation. Father God, give them peace, Lord God, that they know who they have believed, Lord God, and and you are able to do above and beyond what we ask. Father God, open up the windows of heaven today and pour out a blessing upon this congregation, Lord God, as we open up our hearts with praise and worship to you, Lord God. Father God, come down, Lord God, in, in the midst of us, Lord. Minister to us, Lord God, today. Father God, we're so careful to give you thanks and praise. In your name we pray, amen. Good morning. It's been a little while since I've come up and been able to sing for different reasons, but I'm so thankful to be back up here this morning. So I'm not up here by myself. The Holy Ghost is here with me this morning. And I have truly felt his presence. I feel his presence now. So the song I'm going to sing is not a new song. And in the first part of the song it says, In Holy Pages, this truth can be found. I promise to stand on when darkness abounds. Oh, right never loses and wrong never wins. Now, in today's culture and society, that's just the opposite. So as Christians, if we're not careful, we can become dismayed. Our focus 
is distracted from our Lord and Savior and we look at our circumstance, that's the devil. He also knows how to work us and remind us of our past. He doesn't want us to forget that. Any way to tear us down. Or maybe we're making decisions today that's not pleasing to God. So this song is a very special song for me. Grace will always be greater than sin. Yeah. It talks about God's unconditional love and his abounding amazing grace. truth can be found a promise to stand on when darkness abounds all right never loses and wrong never wins and grace will always in this morning.
glory. How many of you are thankful for grace this morning? Amen. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of the Lord if you can. I think I can kick a football this morning. My goodness. Oh, my word. Thank God for grace. Amen. Thank God for grace. Praise the Lord. Today's a special day here at Sneed's Assembly. Um, I, uh, this is my very first baby dedication as pastor of Sneed's Assembly of God this morning. And uh, it's a special day. I always love dedicating babies back to the Lord. Uh, today is a special day for Mr. Forrest Brown Sapp. I'm going to ask if he will. Oh, come on and bring that family with you. Here we are. Come on. Praise the Lord. God, he's so tiny. Wow. Amen. It takes a village to raise a youngin', doesn't it? Ethan and Mandolin, today you stand before this congregation in the sovereignty of God to bring Forrest back to him. Baby dedications are not only special times in church services, but they are biblical. We are given examples of baby dedications in the word of God, and we are admonished to dedicate or to give back our children to the Lord for his purpose and for his use. Make no mistake, it Forrest was born for God and for his purpose. Psalms 127 verse 3, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. While children are definitely a gift from God to us, in reality, children are a gift to God from a mother's womb. They are a reward for God for his mighty, miraculous work of conception and birth. Ethan and Mandolin, Today you hold in your arms a miracle of God. A miracle given to you by God and now today in the sight of this congregation and in the sight of God you are dedicating this miracle back to his heavenly father for his purpose and for his glory. I charge you by the word of the Lord to raise this child in the admonition of the Lord as Hannah did Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 27 and 28. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he lives, he shall be lent to the Lord. I also admonish you and your family, and I charge you to present force to the Lord as Mary and Joseph did their son Jesus. For the Bible says, after eight days they presented Jesus to the Lord in the temple. This gives us an example as parents to raise our children in the house of God, presenting them with the truth of God's word, the power of worshiping, and the importance of being with God's people. Yet the first and foremost place of worship for Forrest is to be your home, where he should be exposed to a Christian home whose parents not only pray over him, but pray with him. As you care for this precious child's physical needs, such as feeding, clothing, and nourishing his growth, so, so you be an encouragement as well and an example to his spiritual nourishment. Read God's infallible word to him. It will not return void. Read his word to him that will be a light unto his path and a lamp unto his feet. As he walks in a world that is plagued with darkness, he will be a light. It is overcome by the light of Jesus Christ. Teach him early. Let the light of Jesus shine through you to him, whereby he will know him in a personal way. Ethan and Mandolin, do you accept these biblical and eternal responsibilities from God himself? Do you, according to the scriptures, freely present Forrest Brown Sapp back to the Lord today, in the midst of heaven's witness and in the midst of this congregation. Let us pray for these parents. Would you stretch your hands this way? Lord, we pray for 
Ethan and Mandolin today. We pray, God, that you would keep your hands upon them. Thank you, Lord, for them understanding the significance of bringing this precious little baby to you and presenting him back to you because he is a miracle from you, Lord, and we recognize that. I pray, God, that you would just guide them and strengthen them. I pray, God, that you would bless their home with the power of the Holy Spirit their home will be filled with peace in the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Little Forrest will know who Jesus is before he can ever speak his name. I pray, God, in the name of the Lord that you would protect their home. These grandparents, God, help them to help raise little Forrest with the admonition of the Lord. Protect them, we pray, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said amen. Now let me hold him. God, have mercy, I ain't held one this small. Our grandbaby wasn't this small when she was born. <laughs> well, I got to let them see. Oh, that precious thing. <laughs> wow. Okay, thank y'all for coming today. <laughs> Look at this handsome dude right here. Man, isn't he awesome? Come on, let's pray. And let's dedicate Forrest back to the Lord. Our God, I love you and I thank you for the absolute privilege and honor to present this child, Forrest, back to you. I pray over his little life, God, that you would protect him, that you would lay your hands upon him, that you would strengthen him, that he would grow, Lord, in the way that you would have him to grow, Lord, that he would lean heavy on you in the times of his life. I pray, God, that you would just minister peace to him and strength to him in every facet of his life. I pray, God, that as he becomes a little toddler and then begins to grow into a little boy, teenager God and then to an adult I pray the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ upon him I pray God that he would look to you to be the author and the finisher of his faith I pray God against the wiles of the enemy that would come against him and try to detour him off the path of life that you have ordained for him I pray Lord that you would protect him and so today God we present him back to you I dedicate I dedicate little Forrest Brown Sap to you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God, I ask you in Jesus' name, let this little child be a voice for your kingdom. God, we present him today to you. We dedicate him in the powerful name of Jesus and all of God's people said amen. amen. Now, he's not the only one I put to sleep preaching. <laughs> Thank you so much. Amen. Praise God. I have a few gifts for you here. This is a homemade little Jesus Loves You teddy bear from one of our congreg congregants at Sneed's Assembly. This is a certificate of his dedication and his first little Bible presented to me. Okay? God bless you. Let's give this family a good hand. Thank you all so much for coming this morning. Thank you so much. Bless you, buddy. Love you. God bless you. Love you. How about it, buddy? Bless you, girl. Amen. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stand on back up to y'all's feet. Amen. Let's just enter into another time of worship.
just begin to worship him across this place this morning, for he is worthy. The veil torn before you, you silence the voice of sin and grace. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory, for you are raised to life again. And you have no rival, you have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the glory, yours is the name of oh, oh, oh. What a Give it up for the name of Jesus this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord this morning. God bless you. Thank you, praise and worship team. I tell you, I was a little worried there for a minute. Um, how many of you ever had those mornings where just, uh, I mean, everything that you touch just... <laughs> Well, that's been my morning today. It's just been one of those mornings. I'm not whining, just telling you, reality. It's just been one of those. And then when Chris Maphis, who never, ever, ever makes a mistake, got us on that BGMC thing, I thought, this is it, I'm done. Somebody's going to have to preach, I'm out of here. I'm just done. <laughs> Amen. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you're ready for the word, say Amen. amen. If your neighbor needs it more than you, say, oh, my. What y'all been doing? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. My eyesight is getting worse and worse. I know none of you know anything about that in the house of the Lord. And so I have to blow my font up, and I have it on a white paper today, and it glares off of that, off of that, uh, that thing, that, um, yeah. And so I'm just admitting to you I'm old this morning. That's all there is to it. First Thessalonians chapter number one. First Thessalonians chapter number one. We're going to read. The entirety of the chapter 1, it's only 10 verses, don't panic. And then two verses in chapter number 2. 
Paul and Silvanus, or Silas and Timothy, Timotheus, who is Timothy, unto the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost. If it comes any other way, it ain't God's gospel. <laughs> our gospel came not unto you in word only, but in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as you know that what manner of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that you were in samples or examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. If you're an example for Jesus, somebody's going to believe the gospel through your life. Amen? Amen. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread ab abroad. God wants us to be Christ followers and witnesses everywhere that we go. So that we need not to speak anything. Paul says your life is testifying of the gospel that has reached you by the preaching of the gospel through us. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Praise God. Chapter 2. For yourselves, brethren, know our entrance in unto you. Paul is saying you know who we are and why we came and what we're doing. That it was not in vain. But even after that we had suffered before and were shamefully treated or entreated, we were treated wrong. As you know, at the city of Philippi, We'll slow down right there for just a moment because it's important that you understand this. He says to those people at Thessalonica, even after that we had suffered before we got here and were shamefully entreated, as you know at the city of Philippi, we were bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. Paul said, it doesn't matter what we've been through, we're still going to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I want to use for just a subject very briefly, the treatment at Philippi cannot empty the touch at Thessalonica. The treatment at Philippi cannot empty the touch at Thessalonica. Father, help me today, I pray, clear my mind. Help me, Lord, to preach the gospel with the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Help me, Lord, to be able to convey the words that you would have said in this house today with clarity of thought. I ask you, God, to touch my body, strengthen my voice, I pray. I pray for every person in this building and every person that's listening by live stream, God, that you would, as has already been prayed, come down in this place. We need your presence in this building today, God, more than ever before. I pray over those that are going through a difficult time, God, that you would strengthen them in their faith today and that the word of the Lord would penetrate their hearts and give them hope. I pray for that one that is not saved, not born again in this building, that they would commit to you through the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we're going to thank you for who you are, what you do. You're faithful to your word. You're faithful to your people. Bless us now, we pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said amen. amen. We find the Apostle Paul, Silas, and Timothy 
as they are bringing exhortation to these Christians who are at the church of Thessalonica. Paul begins his letter to the church of Thessalonica and he begins to lay out his greeting and he, and he says, peace to you and, and he says, also grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. There's something about, I shared this with our staff Monday morning as we were meeting, there's something about a greeting that says to us, may the Lord of peace and the Lord of grace be with you today. And every time that we greet God in the morning in our devotion or our prayer time and when we get up and say, thank you, Lord, for another day, how many of you know God delights in giving us grace and giving us peace? You can have grace and peace by simply greeting God first thing in the morning. And here Paul is, along with Silas and Timothy, exhorting these Christians at the church of Thessalonica. These Christians are under severe persecution because of their faith, and not only persecution, but they are receiving pressure from those that are in the city of Thessalonica. They're putting pressure on them, those who have believed the gospel, those who have have been transformed by from idol worship now to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're laying their life out before God. They are being pressured by the rest of the people in the city, and they begin to tell and conjure up lies against Paul. Now I've mentioned this from this pulpit again, but let me before, but let me just review some things here to you this morning. These people begin to accuse Paul. They began to accuse Paul that he was simply after uh, these, these folks' recognition and their money. They began to, they began to uh, lay out a scenario in front of those people who had been saved and began to tell them that the only motive Paul and, and Silas and Timothy had of coming to their city was to do this, get their money and gain recognition. Friend, you understand me very clearly this morning. People will know whether you are truly in love with Jesus, and when you're truly in love with Jesus, they will defile you, they will talk about you, they will conjure up lies about you, but greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. Amen? And Paul finds himself in this place these folks that the gospel that they preached was with power and a calling from God. He said, you know we didn't come for that, but we came from a calling from God. There's some of you in this building this morning, God is calling you and you're running from the calling. You can't outrun the call of God. God has given you uh, gifts and talents and, and things to use for the kingdom of God. You keep running, but God's going to keep running after you. Why? Because just like I said in that baby dedication, God's got a purpose for that little baby, and God's got a purpose for every single person in this building. There is a call of God upon every born-again believer, and that is to tell people about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Paul says, begins to remind these folks that the gospel they preached was with power and a calling from God. He said the reason why you know that it was a calling from God and that it was the power of the gospel is because you're seeing people that used to worship idols or used to live a certain way, they're not living that way anymore. Why? Because of the power of the gospel. Amen? Amen? Put that right there unless I kick it on somebody this morning. These people are now in a living relationship with Jesus Christ. They are living their faith out because they are born again. I want you to look with me again in chapter 2 and let's look at what it says in chapter 2. For brethren, you know our entrance unto you that it was not in vain. This word vain here means empty. And Paul was telling them Guys, what you're hearing from these unbelievers, these naysayers, you know it's not true because you know the message that we preached to you was not empty. It was full of power because it was the gospel. Listen to me one more time. I love this verse, Romans chapter 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God unto salvation. This gospel that we preach 
is the power of God. Say amen. amen. This word vain, it means empty. And Paul was saying we didn't come to you with empty words and vain words. We came to you with the power of of the gospel. It was not empty of its power. It was not empty of its authority. And then Paul goes on to tell them in verse number two, he says, but even after that, we suffered before and were shamefully treated. As you know, you've already heard how bad we were treated at the city of Philippi. We were still bold in our God to speak unto you the gospel of God with much contention. In other words, Paul didn't go into the city of Thessalonica and not have stuff come against him. Many people get upset when they're living for Jesus and stuff comes against you. Stuff's going to come against you whether you're born again or whether you're lost. I'd rather stuff come against me born again. <laughs> I'd rather have Jesus on my side. I'd rather have the comforter of the Holy Spirit walking beside me and guiding me into all truth. I'd rather have him than I'd rather have that world. Somebody say amen. amen. So stuff is going to come your way. It depends on what you're going to do with the stuff, the treatment that people give you. So this morning... As we're talking about the treatment at Philippi that cannot empty the touch at Thessalonica, there are people under the sound of my voice that you're going through things, maybe even from people that you never thought that you would have to go through it with. In the 16th chapter of the book of Acts, you'll find the accounts that the Apostle Paul is telling these Christians at Thessalonica. Go back and read it when you get home. Go to Acts chapter number 16 and begin to read that. When he's exhorting them, he is talking about what happened as, as is recorded by Luke in Acts chapter number 16. We're given the account of what Paul was telling them about in verse number 2. Stay with me. About their shameful entreatment or their harsh treatment and beatings that occurred at Philippi. They were treated badly. They were beaten at the city of Philippi. Anybody get beat up for praising Jesus this week? Anybody get put in prison this week for praising God? Anybody get their feelings hurt for praising God this week? <laughs> Listen, friend. Paul, Silas, and Timothy, they understood what it was to be sold out for God. They understood that no matter what came their way, they were going to stay true to God. They were going to stay true to the calling. Paul could have very well went back and began to make tents again and made a living. But Paul didn't do that. Silas and Timothy could have been in places of a job and done what they were doing. But they didn't do that. They sold out for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They gave everything up for the kingdom of God. I would dare say to us this morning that not one person who has walked with God, maybe not to this extreme, but not one person who has walked with God any length of time has not had a day at Philippi, a bad day, a tough time, going through a season of a rough time, going through a series of seasons of a rough time. When will it stop? When will it end? When will it stop? When will it end? And it's day in and it's day out. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It seems like it just never stops. The attacks never, ever stop. Any real people in, in sneeze today? The Bible says, it's going to get better, hold on. The Bible says that Paul and Silas came down by ship to a place called Troas. And here in Troas, did y'all just see that? Did I, I bet y'all didn't notice that at all. I'm trying to scroll that paper up. <laughs> 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 I'm like, move. <laughs> Where was I? <laughs> I was in Troas. Thank you very much. <laughs> the Bible says that Paul and Silas came down by ship to a place called Troas. And here in Troas, Paul received a vision of a man in Macedonia. Now, we've preached in this pulpit before on the call to Macedonia. And this call that this man stood up and said was bidding them to come to Macedonia and help them. 
All he said was come over here and help us. And the Bible says immediately they endeavored to go into Macedonia believing without a doubt that God had called them to preach the gospel there. And we find that they arrived two days later after going to Macedonia into a play into the city called Philippi, which is what the Bible describes as the chief city or the capital city of that region of Macedonia. As the story goes on, the Sabbath day comes, or the day of worship, and they went down to a river where the women are gathered on the Sabbath day, and the ladies are down there praying. Men, I said, the ladies are down there praying. <laughs> on the day of worship, there's a group of ladies down there calling on God. <laughs> They're down there praying. Let me tell you something. There's two things I fear. God and a woman praying. <laughs> Amen. You better watch out. They're going to get a hold of heaven. You let those women, you let, you let somebody mess with their babies or mess with their family, and you let a mama go to warfare in prayer with God, you better back up. I said Satan better back up because it's about to be unleashed in somebody's life when you mess with a mama or a woman. Somebody say Amen. amen. Ladies, that was a real good opportunity for a Jericho march for you. <laughs> we find that as the story goes on, here they are, they're, they're praying. They sat down and began to preach the gospel to them. Paul and, and Silas and Timotheus, they come to this group of ladies and they sit down with them and they begin to preach the gospel. They didn't talk to them about the weather. They didn't talk to them about the upcoming election. That one hurt. <laughs> they didn't talk. To, well, Lord, forgive me. I can't be a hypocrite. They may have talked to them about their bad football teams. I don't know. They may have. But <laughs> they talked to them about the gospel. They preached the gospel to these ladies. And the Bible says that one by the name of Lydia, her heart was open to the gospel and she and her whole family was baptized by Paul. That sounds familiar. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The whole family got saved and jumped into a water baptismal pool. If you wasn't here last Sunday, baby, you missed it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> We watched as an entire family, the Holy Spirit began to brood over this place and an entire family gets in a water baptismal pool along with others. Why? That's the power of the gospel. Amen. This woman who got saved, Lydia, she then constrained Paul and Silas to come to her house to eat and lodge there. Says, hey, come to my house and eat. The preacher does need feeding every once in a while. Amen? Y'all do really good at that. Y'all need to stop. <laughs> My wife said, y'all got to lay off the banana nut breads. <laughs> yes, all of it. Please, just bring it to me when she's not there. <laughs> oh, glory. And now we find the story after they go to this lady's house and eat. We find the story turn 180 degrees. The apostle Paul and Silas are one day down by the river seeing the salvation of the Lord. Everything's going good. And then on their way to another prayer meeting, the devil shows up. Everything's going good. Bunch of people just got saved. Whole household just got baptized and hell don't like it. Amen? And the devil shows up. We're told in the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 16, I've said this from this pulpit before, so just stay with me. That a woman possessed with the spirit of divination met them, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. This woman was a fortune teller who gained her money by giving those she worked for false hope and senseless ideas. 
immediately after a, a win in the kingdom of God, hell shows up. And she came to where Paul and Silas were, walking to prayer and began to cry, these are the men that are servants of the Most High God, which show us under the way of salvation. And the Bible says she did this not one day, not two days, not three days, but she did this many days. That tells me two things. Number one, Paul and Silas didn't go to the house of God one time. They kept going back to the house of God. They kept going to the prayer meeting. They were consistent in seeking God. Why? Because they knew the God that they sought was going to answer, was going to answer, was going to come through, was going to make it right, was going to do what he says he's going to do. Don't give up on God. Amen. The second thing it tells me is hell's not going to relinquish its, its thwarts or its, its darts either. I didn't come to give him any credit except he's a liar. Let me just help some of you. Some of you give the devil more credit than you do God. <laughs> Amen. They knew that they were going to do what God had called them to do. And she came to where Paul and Silas were walking to prayer and began to cry out, these are the guys, these are the guys, these are the guys. I've said this before. And the Bible says she did it many days until Paul had enough. Sometimes you got to make your mind up, this is enough. I've had enough of it. And I'm going to rebuke that which is coming against me. Now, we got a lot of people that are declaring and decreeing anything and saying that this can happen and that can happen. Well, if that's the case, I want you to go outside and I want you to declare and decree that there's never any harm going to come against anybody again. That's just not biblical. That hurts some feelings too. We try to super spiritualize everything sometimes. And we got to take it like it is, is because we live in a fallen world. But the Bible says to me that I have been given power and authority over the devil. Somebody say amen. So when he comes at me and over and over and over and over again, I'm going to get enough of it and I'm going to rebuke him in the name of Jesus and he has to flee. Amen. Well, glory. The Bible says day after day until Paul had enough and he told her in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you that this spirit come out of you. And guess what happened? He came out. The name of Jesus. I said the name of Jesus. The Bible, I hadn't forgot the title of my message the whole time. The Bible says that her master saw what happened and they grabbed Paul and Silas, delivered them to the magistrates of the city saying, these men are making trouble in our city. Can I tell you, when the gospel comes to town, it's going to cause trouble. It will shake things up. It will cause trouble amongst those who are comfortable in their ways. It will cause trouble for those who are who are who are dealing in darkness to a level, it will cause trouble to a town when the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ comes. But I just came to serve notice on Satan in hell. I think uh, that trouble has come to Sneeds, Florida. Why? Because the gospel is here and we're not going to back up from preaching the gospel. So every drug dealer, you're in trouble. Every alcohol, you're in trouble. Every wife beater, you're in trouble. Every husband cheater, you're in trouble. Every single thing of darkness, you are in trouble because the gospel is here. Hallelujah. You're in trouble. We're coming for you. Now, we're not coming with an axe or a sword. We're coming with you in the power of the gospel. And we're going to love on you. We're going to watch God transform your life. Amen. Amen. This is why we serve our community. This is why we serve our community. 
This is why we do what we do in our community because we want trouble in the place of darkness, not trouble of darkness, but uh, trouble in the places where darkness is prevailing against our children and our schools and our homes. Enough is enough. In the name of Jesus, Sneak, Florida, come out. Hallelujah. Enough's enough. I help me, Jesus. Is that me? Turn that one off. With it. Turn this one on. Y'all with me? Calls at one o'clock and two o'clock in the morning. I'm not. I'm not complaining about mama's babies in a mess in a world out there. I've had enough of it. I said I've had enough of it. And I've decided we're going to wage war on every surrounding uh, uh, county, every surrounding uh, uh, walk of darkness around this church. We're going to wage war on it. We're going, we are waging war. And that's why there's so much talk. That's why there's so much trouble. That's why there's so much stirring, if you will. But what they don't understand is we're going to be like Timothy. We're going to stir up the gift of the Holy Ghost in us. Uh, and we're going to keep preaching the gospel. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep serving and we're going to see this community turn upside down for Jesus Christ. That's why we serve our community. That's why we get in the places of darkness and say the light's here. Amen. The light is here. Look at your neighbor and say you need to be light. <laughs> you need to tell the darkness I'm here. Amen. You see, this morning, friend, this world we live in, the persecution we undergo, there are times where it seems like we're in the deepest, darkest, coldest place we could ever be. We feel as if we've been beaten up and cast away by society because we stand for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Darkness does not like the light. But I like what the Bible says, and at midnight, in the middle of the night, Brother Tyson, in the middle of the night, in the darkest, in the coldest, in the midnight hour of being in that place, I believe, oh, Paul, I may have said this before, but I love this. I believe, oh, Paul looked over at Silas, squinting his eyes through the darkness, trying to see him and said, Silas, yeah, Paul, what is it? Would you give me a little beat? And, and Silas begins to just tap a little bit. And Silas says, what, Paul? And Paul said, Silas, give me a little bit beat. And we're going to pray and we're going to sing and I believe Silas began to tap his old big toe. And then Paul may have set out singing, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. Come on, church. Uh, we can't sit back. We got to pray and we got to go. Hallelujah. We got to go. No matter the darkness, no matter the darkness, we got to go. What it must have been. I wished I would have heard what they were singing. I bet you it wasn't gloom, despair, and agony on me. <laughs> I bet you it wasn't. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> Y'all better be glad I can't sing on tune. <laughs> Amen, Sister Donna. The Bible says, Y'all with me this morning? The Bible says they prayed and sang and the other prisoners heard. And guess what happened? Anybody remember what happened? The place began to shake. Something began to shake. My God, I'm ready for some stuff to shake in Sneeds, Florida. <laughs> I said, I'm ready for some stuff to shake in Grand Ridge and Sneeds and Chattahoochee and Sycamore and Greensboro and Dalewood and Two Egg and wherever you from, uh, Shady Grove. Come on, Shady Grove people. Where are you at in the house this morning? Greenwood, Mayor Ranner. Y'all know where Mayor Ranner is, don't you? <laughs> Woo! I'm ready for some stuff to shake. Amen. We played church long enough, so let's shake hell. Hmm. All the doors were opened. Butterbean, open those doors back there. 
Brother opened those doors back there. Brother Billy opened that door. Brother Mitchell opened that door. Just keep it open a minute. I'm serving notice on every demon and devil of hell in this county. There's a place. There is a place for you to come and find Jesus to be real and find God to be real. Come on in and get saved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, glory. I said, well, glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Close it lest somebody complains it's hot. <laughs> oh my God. I feel something shaking. I said, I feel something shaking. It didn't even it didn't just open the doors, but it loosed the bands of all of those that were in there. Woke the guard up and he said, My God, they're gonna kill me. I done I done I done messed up. These boys are loose. Paul said, no, 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 hold on. It's all right. It's all right. Anybody remember what happened to the guard? He got saved. Glory to God. That's what happens when the power of the gospel is preached, brother. I said, that's what happens when the power of the gospel is preached. And it doesn't matter what happened to you at Philippi. The only thing that matters is a touch of God at Thessalonica. That's the only thing that matters. Whatever happened in the past, it can't outdo what the touch of God will do right here at Sneed's Assembly of God for you. Man, I got to quit. Thank you. <laughs> the Bible says the guard got saved. He and all his household. There it is again. They were baptized. That's not the, the only entire family that's going to be baptized, saved, and set free here at Sneed's Assembly, by the way. <laughs> then you know what happened? The guard brought the preacher home to eat. <laughs> Not banana nut bread. <laughs> Fried chicken, glory to God. <laughs> it's in there, ain't it? <laughs> Give me five more minutes. Paul is reminding these Christians at Thessalonica, and I came to remind some folks in this house this morning. Whatever has happened to you at Philippi, it cannot outlive the touch of God at Thessalonica. Can't outweigh it. It cannot empty you of what God has put in you. And Paul is reminding these Christians at Thessalonica, this gospel we've come and preached to you, it's not empty. It has the power. It's not empty and it's not in vain. And if what happened in Philippi to us did not empty the touch of God on our lives, don't let that which you are going through empty the touch of God on your life. Don't let it empty it. Is it tough? Sometimes it's very tough. Is it hard? Yes. Is it discouraging? Sometimes yes. Is it get wearisome? Yes. But you cannot allow the treatment at Philippi to empty you from the touch that God wants to put in you. Let me remind you the gospel we preached about is a Savior that left an empty tomb. He emptied the sting of death. He emptied the hopelessness and gave hope. He emptied desperation and gives deliverance. He empties hate and gives love. He empties worship to a dead idol and gives a living sacrifice of praise to a risen Savior. He empties brokenness and gives wholeness. He empties fear and gives boldness. He empties hunger and gives fullness. He empties thirst and gives satisfaction. Hallelujah. He empties sickness and gives healing. He empties despair and gives dynamic power. He empties punishment and gives grace to those that need it. He empties condemnation and he gives mercy. He empties sin and he gives forgiveness. Do not let what happens at Philippi empty your touch at Thessalonica. 
Because when God touches you, I said when God touches you, <clears throat> it's pretty obvious that we need a touch of God in our country. It's very obvious. It starts with a touch of God in every single believer's life. That's where it starts, a touch of God. I'm not talking about a, just a three-minute feel-good. I'm talking about a divine touch of the power of God. He'll turn your life around, sir, just like that. He'll turn you around, ma'am, immediately. There are some of you that are born again in this house, born again, spirit-filled people of God that love God with all of your heart, and you're going through one thing at Philippi after another, after another, after another, after another. Don't you let it empty your touch that God gave you at Thessalonica. You say, Brother Bill, what do I do? Same thing Paul and Silas and Timothy did. Keep coming back to the prayer meeting. Keep coming back to the altar. Keep bringing it back to God. After a while, that thing's going to break and God's going to get the glory and their whole household's going to get saved. Somebody say amen. amen. <clears throat> Brother Mitchell, if you'll come. Maybe you're here and sin has left you empty. You hear me this morning. The touch of God in Sneeds, Florida will carry you through. I said the touch of God that you can receive this morning at Sneeds, Florida will carry you all the way through eternity. Some of you are on the fence. You want to so bad. You want to just give it all up. And you're just clenched to that which happened to you at Philippi. You're clenched to yesterday. And God is saying to you this morning, if you'll just let go, I've got a fresh touch for you this morning at Sneed's Assembly. I got a fresh touch for you. He touched Abraham. He touched Isaac. He touched Jacob in the river Jabbok. He touched all of these that he has called into his kingdom with this power of the gospel. God touched them. When God touches you, friend, you'll know it and everybody else will know it. But you got to give up what happened to you at Philippi and get into a place of Thessalonica and be bold enough to say, Lord, let it rain on me. Let the fire fall on me today. Let it be my turn, God. Let the rain, let it 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 rain. Open up the windows of heaven, God, and let it rain in this building. Open up your window and let it rain. Sing, Brother Mitchell, for just a moment. I want you to just sing for just a second as the Holy Spirit Thank you, Jesus. Stand on your feet across this house. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Come on, if you've been through Philippi, but you've had a touch of God, you ought to be singing that right now. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. are open for people that have been persecuted at Philippi and you need a touch of God at Thessalonica. Whether you're not saved or whatever it may be, I want you to get out as many as will. I want you to get out. You need a touch of God this morning. Get out from where you are and let it rain on you. Come right now. Come on. Come on. Let's empty those altars and get empty those pews and get
praying in these altars this morning, God. I need a touch from heaven. Let it rain, God. Let it rain, God. Let it rain, oh God. Let it rain, oh God. Let it rain, oh God. Give it up for God. One just got born again in this place. Hallelujah. with me this morning. Slip your hands toward heaven. When you do that, you are surrendering and you're saying, Philippi, it's gone. I'm in Thessalonica now. I'm in the touch of God. I'm in a season of the touch of God. I feel that. My God, I feel that. I'm in a season of the touch of God in my life. Well, glory to God. Hallelujah. Philippi is gone. Philippi is gone. Hallelujah. Come on, sing it out. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Just a second. You may not know the words, but it's just that simple. Open up the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Let it rain. 
as Mitchell leads into this, this is what I want you to do. I want every man in this building to sing at the top of your lungs this song with them. Men, I want your voice to be a crescendo up to heaven as Mitchell leads. And then I'm going to instruct the ladies to come in. Why? Because the men are supposed to be leading the way in defeating darkness in Thessalonica and Philippi. We're coming for you, darkness. I said we're coming for you. Sing it, brother. Sing it. Hallelujah. Come on, men. Men, sing, men. Oh, glory to God. Sing, men. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, men, sing, sing, sing. Oh, glory, that sounds good. Or have not I promised you, saith God, that I would bring you out of the horrible pit and the miry clay? Have not I said that my arm is not too short, that I cannot reach you? And have I not said in my word that I will never leave you nor forsake you? And whatever happened in your past or whatever's going on in your life now, it cannot empty the touch that I have for you, saith the Spirit of God. I am calling you to a deeper walk with me, saith the Spirit of God. I am calling you to a deeper walk, saith the Spirit of Almighty God. Let everything go and follow me, saith the Spirit of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah to God. Let it rain. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's just worship him. Some of you in this building this morning, you're new to this. This is the gifts of the Spirit in operation with message in tongues with interpretation for the edifying of the body of Christ. I want us to sing that chorus one more time, but I want us to sing it a cappella. Brother Mitchell's going to lead us, but I want us all across this building sing it a cappella. Go, Mitchell. Let it rain. Come on, let him hear your let voice. It Hallelujah. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Join your neighbor by the hand. Open the As you sing, I want you to, you're praying while you're singing for your neighbor. Let it rain on my neighbor. Let the Holy Ghost rain on my neighbor. Let the Spirit of God rain on my neighbor. Come on. My Lord and my God. Woo. One more time. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. My God. Let it rain. Let it rain. 
hell is on the run. I said hell is on the run. Amen. Wow. Wow. Now I know why hell fought so hard. Now I know. Wow, what God is doing. If you're a visitor in this place today, please don't consider yourself a visitor any longer. Come back and be with us. Church family, let's give it up for all of those that visited with us today. Tony, we're so proud of you, man. This is Sister Corrine's brother. Got born again today. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother C.J. Carpenter, would you dismiss us in prayer today, brother? Thank you for joining us today, and we hope you enjoyed the sermon. We'd love to see you in person. We're at 2062 River Road in Sneeds, Florida, 32460. On Sundays, our Sunday school begins at 9 a.m., and our Sunday morning service begins at 10 a.m. Hope to see you soon.